Hi, Code Monkey here. I just got an, off an exhausting week and a half of 12 hour days getting a game ready for Guy Online. But I'm back now and starting to put together courses, at, which you can find at williamclarkson.net. And I forgot to upload this video a few weeks ago about how to compile using the Phaser Project template. And you can also use these same instructions for the template that I released since then, the Ultimate Games Part template. This video will show you how to compile your game into one file and a couple of the different ways I use assets when I'm using Webpack. So let's get started. Code Monkey, get up, get coffee. Code Monkey, go to job. So in the last video, we looked into being able to load images into Phaser, and we used two different methods. The traditional way that we've done it before, and using npm, the node package manager, to use it as an object, importing it as we did here, import logo image, and then loading that into the key logo. And then we used face the traditional way by just putting the path here at the end. Now, I mentioned that there were some advantages and disadvantages, and that's a lot of it goes into how we build the project. So I'm going to stop the server here, control C, yes, to terminate batch job. And you'll see over here now we're disconnected in the browser. And the command you want to run to build it is npm run script with a dash in between run and script build. And then we go over into our main folder and we wait for a new folder called dist for distribution to be created. And that's going to have the files in there that we need to be able to run the program on pretty much any modern browser and any device. And there it is. And we have an index HTML, and we have a bundle min.js, which has taken all of that code and put it into a very basic JavaScript. And of course, we have our image here. We don't have the face image, however. That's because the webpack that is responsible for compiling everything saw this import logo image and then it included that it did not include the face because that's being loaded at runtime just the traditional way that we've always done it we can have it build it with the face if we use require now we're telling it to require that image as if it were a script i'm going to run the build again and you'll notice that the folder over here will disappear and it'll boot us back into the parent folder until that is created again, then we can go back into it. There it is. And now the face is in there too. Now there is a disadvantage to this as well though, because there was one time that I was trying to dynamically load things at runtime and I only wanted to load what was necessary. I was doing different effects and I had a hundred different effects, but I only wanted to load like one or two of them. So say that if I had load effect and passed in an eye, and then I said this load image effect plus I assets effect plus I PNG. And then say that I had over here a hundred different effects. Then it would see this require and it would put all of those effects in there, even if I wasn't using them. So I am normally going back to using simply the load image with the path without the require, even though I have to keep track individually of what images are going in there or not. For me, it's more worth it because I've got more control over the project and it was muddying up things with dynamic loads, and I use quite a few dynamic loads. It is up to you to decide how you want to do it. If you want to continue to do that, that's fine. In my tutorials going forward, I'm probably going to use this method here, the second one here. There is another problem as well, if you notice that warning and asset side limit, and so that's making quite a big file. 
936k, and we didn't write very much code. Well, a lot of what that is is Phaser. It has put the entire Phaser library in here as well. So what I am going to do is I'm going to do this the old way. I'll make a folder called Scripts, and then I'm going to include that Phaser into the index.html the way that we've always done. So I've made that scripts. I brought the phaser min into that. And I'm going to go into the index HTML here. Script src equals scripts phaser.min.js. And then I'm going to remove the import phaser from here. Just comment it out there. And there you see it's still working. And it's bringing that script in from the scripts folder. Now, when we compile it this time, we won't get that warning. Now, I know a lot of you out there are going to say, then, you know, we're still using the same amount. It's just all in different files. Ah, but see how quickly that built for one thing. Let's go over here to the folder. And without phaser being included, and we will need to add then the scripts folder into here, into the distribution folder. And I usually like to keep a build folder because this is always changing. So I'd copy everything out of there and into a folder called build. It's a little extra work on my part, but it gives me more control over the project. Now, as I was saying, a lot of you are going to say, but it's still the same amount of code. Even though the bundle min.js is only now 3k, which is very, very small, you're still putting in that 813 kilobytes of phaser. And yes, that's true. However, a lot of times I'm using that on a website for web games. Say that when I was making games at guyonline.com, for example, there is no reason to compile that file over and over again if we're just using the same file because we can link to that file and then it's cached by the browser. So if it's using it over and over again, the same phaser min file for different games on the same website, then it only has to load that three kilobyte script to be able to work or however big it is. It will get bigger as we make a game bigger. But it saves a lot of time. Now, it might be different the way that you're doing your game. Different games require different setups. But for my purposes, I'm writing multiple games for single websites. So it's to my advantage to do it this way. I hope that's been helpful for you. I await any comments and questions below down in the comment section. I know there's going to be some that disagree with me, and that's fine. I love to discuss code. Thank you very much for watching.